Hi, it's Robin. Got something different for you today. You probably know that most of my videos are about Commodore computers, but it's not that I don't like other 8-bit lines of computers. In fact, I own a lot of Atari computers and consoles, some Apple, and even some more obscure ones. But just earlier this month, I was watching a Jan Beta video where he was building a power supply for a TRS-80 Model 1, and watching that was kind of like a German version of Electroboom, and he mentioned that this was Septandy. Various YouTubers have been making videos about Radio Shack Tandy computers, and since I've watched some from Adrian's Digital Basement, Mr. Lurch, Tech Tangents, and LGR. I thought this would be a fun chance for me to show off my TRS-80 collection, which honestly I don't know all that much about. So today I'm going to go through my Tandy Radio Shack computers in roughly chronological order. I'm going to do two parts from about 1980 to 1983, and then another one from 1983 or 4 to 1987 split roughly in half. And, just for good measure, if I know about an Easter egg in one, I'll show it. So in case you didn't know, the TRS stands for Tandy Radio Shack, and the 80 is after the Z80 processor that this first series of TRS-80 computers used. Somewhat amusingly, they didn't keep using the Z80 in later computers, but they kept the TRS-80 brand name. I actually worked at Radio Shack briefly in the 90s, but that was after all these computers were gone. Growing up, I knew that the TRS-80 computers were at Radio Shack, but I barely knew anyone who bought one. I think my dad's cousin down in southern Ontario, we visited there one time, and he had some model of TRS-80 that was similar to this one. And my cousin out in the Canadian prairies had a Radio Shack computer as well, maybe actually a few of them. I think that was mostly because Radio Shack was the only electronic store anywhere within hundreds of miles of him. So this is the TRS-80 Model 3. I don't have a Model 1 or 2. The first Model 3s came out in 1980, so that's why chronologically I'm including this one first. But actually this particular model, I'm already breaking my rule, is from 1983. And it's got the full 48K of RAM and the dual drives. I bought this from my friend Alan some years ago. So I had just verified that the computer was working fine. I gave it a clean yesterday. And I started recording, and this happened. TRS-80 Model 1. That was kind of like watching it. Oh, oh. Crap. After that pop sound, very smelly smoke started coming out the top of the computer. So I took it apart, and this is what I saw. This is a filter capacitor, and apparently these things go off all the time in these computers. Adrian Black had one go on camera as well. <laughs> Okay, so try and show you the Easter egg on this one. I'm going to power up the computer. The switch is just under here. I'm going to hold down the brake button while I power up. And it should go into basic. If it's not going to release any more magic smoke. And there we go with a cassette prompt. And just hit enter. Memory size. If you want to reserve some RAM away from basic, you could enter the amount of bytes there, but I won't. And here we go. Radio Shack Model 3 Basic. Copyright. 80 Tandy. Okay, and so the little program to reveal the Easter egg for X equals 1485 to 1494. And we're just going to be peaking RAM, print, character string, peak, X, and 30, next. Okay, just going to look in the ROM, and what message do we find there? Ron. <laughs> Easter eggs aren't always the most amazing thing, but there's usually a story behind them. In this case, the word Ron appears. That's the first name of Ron Light, who worked at Tandy Systems Design, which was a group inside Radio Shack that developed their computers. And apparently he was if not the only programmer, the main programmer for the ROM here. It's actually hard to find much info about these people, but they were the ones that designed this computer. Ron Light. I heard he passed away quite a while ago. But here we go. His memory lives on because he hid his name inside this computer. 
Okay, and one other one, I've booted up Model 3 TRS-DOS version 1.3 now from 1981. Oh, you can see my serial number. Enter the date. Well, today is 09 September 23rd of 2020. Can I handle that? And what's the time? 01.30. Yep, 1.30 in the morning. Try again. What? Didn't like that? Oh. 01 colon 30 colon. TRS DOS ready. What do I do? Oh, there we go. Okay. So now we boot it into Disk Basic. And I know very little about this, but apparently if we type in CMD quote ampersand quote ampersand, it just returns this line. This Basic is copyrighted by Tandy Corporation, 1980. Not really all that much of an Easter egg, eh? But often these commands are hidden. But there was a tendency for these companies to hide these sort of statements in a cryptic way so that when it goes to court and they have to prove who owns something, they can summon up a message like this. Apparently there was a whole story of uh, employees or contractors and Tandy suing each other, and Easter eggs were a part of it, but I, I can't show all those today. I don't have the computer. Okay, moving on. Next up, I've got this Radio Shack Pocket Computer, originally sold for 279 Canadian dollars, and this was right around 1980. So massive thanks to my friend Ben for getting this for me. I think from his brother originally. It includes the manual. That's full of instructions and all about how to program it. Also has this cassette interface. The plugs. This made me very nostalgic when I saw this realistic tape. And somebody's got a bunch of programs on there. Adrian, Duradata, what was that, Reedy Prog 25, Raster 1. Anyway, that just reminds me of the early 80s so much because I would buy these for my Commodore 64. And uh, it was actually Radio Shack that had reasonably priced short cassettes that were better for data. Mm. Includes this nice case. And here it is, the actual computer. It's very reflective, hard to get this good on camera. Radio Shack TRS-80 Pocket Computer. And there it is, what a thing. It amazes me that they can make a computer like this in 1980. Well, again with the serial numbers. And if you can make out the screen. Yeah, and it's totally programmable and basic. Right now it's in Pro Program Mode, and you can cycle through with this Mode button into Reserve, Definition, and Run Mode. And this actually has Basic built in. We're in Program Mode. And let's, let's type in 10 space print. And there's a shift button up here. Quote. Hello. Shift. And press enter. And now it's being entered into memory. Okay, and if I switch from program mode over to run, and then actually type in R U N and enter. Hello. How about that? So the Easter egg on this is is really not a big deal, but there's still, a, again, there's a bit of a story to it. So if you look on this top row, QWERTY has punctuation above each line, exclamation, the quotation marks I use for the print, number sign, and so on. But suspiciously, Y doesn't have anything above it. Well, U has the question mark. So everything has punctuation above it. 
use the shift key to get to it, except for this Y. Okay, so what happens if we do press shift Y? It prints that symbol, which you may recognize as the Japanese yen symbol. The reason it's kind of interesting is that Radio Shack did not actually make these themselves. I don't think they had the resources to do this. Instead, it was a company in Japan called Sharp who made these, and Radio Shack just had Sharp produce, you know, Radio Shack TRS-80 branded units. And my understanding is that it was too expensive or cost prohibitive for them to actually redo the ROMs or whatever to get rid of the yen symbol. So instead, they just opted to hide it from all the documentation and take it off to just basically undocument it instead. I happen to have a Sharp Pocket computer. This is a later model, which I think later they called uh, Radio Shack released it as the Pocket Computer 3. You can see the yen symbols actually here on this Sharp model. But this is my Sharp EL545, and this was the calculator that I used throughout my high school uh, and university math career, and it was the first calculator I had that did hexadecimal. So, of course, while I was learning assembly language on my Commerce 64, this saw lots of use. So there it is, that, that calculator's been... Uh, a very faithful friend for about 34 years now. And uh, it's it's also by Sharp, who are the ones really behind the Radio Shack pocket computers. Okay, moving on. And here I have my Radio Shack TRS-80 color computer, also known as the Coco, and retroactively the Coco 1, when other color computer models came out later. This particular one has some history. It was donated to me by the Foster family. The father passed away, and he had been an editor, the index editor, of Rainbow Magazine, which was a magazine dedicated to the color computer. So he made a lot of use of this machine. So thanks again to the Foster family. So you can see that unlike Commodore, Microsoft was credited right here on the title screen. This is Extended Color Basic 1.0 Copyright 1980 by Tandy. That's the year this machine was released, 1980, under license from Microsoft. But that still didn't stop the Microsoft team. I like to blame Bill Gates, but maybe it's somebody else from still putting their Easter egg in. So if you put CLS and a color number such as two, then it'll clear the screen to that color. There's yellow, CLS, three, blue, and so on. But if you put an invalid number in, like CLS nine, and press return, it'll print Microsoft on the screen. The color computer three has quite a few more Easter eggs. We'll look at that next episode. Okay, moving on. Okay, I have here the TRS-80 Model 100 portable computer. So the port's on one side. It's got 6 volts DC, the display adjustment. Kind of like a contrast knob, but it seems to affect the angle a bit too. Power on and off. Once again with the serial number. There's the battery compartment, just takes four AA batteries. Apparently runs 20 hours on one set. Pretty amazing. This is from 1983, by the way. And there's the modem controls. It has a nine pin jack. And there's the ports on the back. A reset button, RS-232C, printer port, phone, and cassette. And this computer was also courtesy of the Foster family. I'm in the built-in basic. Okay. It has, for a portable computer of night from 1983, it has a super good keyboard, I think. And like most of the Tandy computers, it does have an Easter egg. Just going to type in this little program for I equals 63842 to 63919. Step 11. A for J equals 3 to 10. 
30 print character string. This is just again peaking RAM, I plus J, 40, and then first loop, print a line, and next. Now if we run this, it'll show the system files and including some hidden ones. So these last ones, these are the built in apps, but the last one here is Suzuki, Hayashi. Oh, and why does it say Sado now? Last time I ran this, it said Ricky there. <laughs> so it's probably no surprise that those names are again people who worked on the firmware for this computer J. Hayashi, J. Suzuki, and I can't get that Ricky back. <laughs> but that's apparently Rick Yamashita. And Bill Gates claims to have worked on this computer himself. I saw one interview where he said he was nostalgic about it because this was the last product in 1982, 1983, the last project that he contributed a lot of code to. I guess he didn't know to sneak his uh, name into this list in the ROM. Okay, so we'll wrap it up for this episode. I'm going to clean up my other Tandy computers and see if any more magic smoke comes out. Get them ready, and we'll take a look at these ones next time. Quick preview. This is the Model 102, which is the successor to the 100. Here's the Color Computer 2. And look at that. I got it at Value Village for $6.99. I'll probably take off the tag finally, but I <laughs> just wanted you to see that. And here's the MC10 which is the cheapest computer that Tandy ever produced, as far as I know. It's meant to be a competitor for the Timex Sinclair 1000 in the North American market, but, well, it was color. Kind of too little too late, though. And finally, the king of the Tandy 8-bits, the Color Computer 3. Look at that, I got for $5.99 at Value Village quite some years ago. And this is also king of the Tandy Easter eggs, so we'll take a look at all those. Uh, assuming I can get it working. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do. And let me know in the comments what you think about me doing non-Commodore episodes, even if I'm not as knowledgeable about them. This episode ended up being a little on the shorter side, but I don't know, maybe sometimes that's nice to see <laughs> just a 20-minute a episode or whatever this works out to. Thanks very much to my patrons who support the channel. If you're interested in becoming one of my patrons, check the description for a link. And if you're looking for more videos about Tandy, then check that Septandy hashtag. Click on that and you'll see lots of other excellent videos by other YouTubers about Tandy computers. All right, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.